Thank you to Studio Sweden Headphones for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Ooh. What up? We got a great sponsor here with Studio Headphones. They make uh, some great headphones, and uh, Phoenix has been trying out their pair of the Regent headphones for a couple weeks now at this point. What do you think, Phoenix? Um, I love the headphones. I use them all the time whenever I'm listening to music or whenever I'm editing uh, some videos or something. I like the ability to be able to plug in and plug out um, or go wireless with the headphones. It really helps me out when I'm editing or when I'm listening to music, when I'm just hanging out. Uh, I love the look. They're, I got the white pair, and they just look great. Um, they're really comfortable. I like really love these headphones. Yep. Most uh, headphone brands only offer you technology or style, not with Studio. They offer you both in a convenient, affordable package. And if you want to make those headphones a little bit more affordable for you, use code FILMFRAC as a checkout. It lets them know that you heard about them from us. And, uh, you know, it makes this collaboration worthwhile for everyone. So use code FILMFRACUS, all capital letters, all together for 15% off any purchase at studiosweden.com. What a steal. What a steal. Thanks so much, guys. On with the show. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to our fantastic 4th of July episode of Film Fracas. A firework, happy, firework, firework, yeah, firework. Happy Independence Day to our American listeners. And firework, firework, firework. Also a firework. happy Independence Day to all of our non-American listeners. Firework, firework, firework. Who firework. doesn't love fireworks? Nobody. I don't. Oh. <laughs> this is um, I am Carter Spilliards, one of your hosts. Uh, joining me today, we have Barrett the Rock Johnson. Happy to be here. And uh, Robbie DeShitter DeShazer. Wow. Oh. This You're is a family show, Carter. It's a family show. You're going to bring up my middle school trauma. I am. <laughs> That's what we're getting into this episode. Oh, one sad goodness. firework. We're getting into... <laughs> uh, <laughs> great oh, anywho my. uh today <laughs> we thought um we're gonna have a pretty calm episode i think we're not actually yeah. gonna do any fracasing this episode yeah, just, just gonna a be a fun episode to sit around you yeah. know a good one to yeah. uh sit and drink a nice yeah. beer exactly or... listen to you yeah. know before the fireworks start. there's always that awkward period i find at like eight, after th- lunch, 8 30 well it's before, like well like well yeah there's the after lunch barbecue before the night when it's fireworks people are playing games people usually take naps and stuff mm-hmm. that's when you want to you can listen to it you can listen to it in those that fucking like thirty minutes from eight thirty to to nine or nine to nine thirty. Right. When, when you're waiting for when you're like waiting for the fireworks, enough. but it's not dark enough, so you know they're not coming, yeah. and it feels like it takes forever. And y- your little cousin's like burned his eyebrow <laughs> yes. off with a sparkler. Yeah, no. Like everyone's having just, to deal yeah, with that. Yeah, just just sit in a lawn chair and listen to listen uh, to some film fracas. Yeah, don't care about your cousin's uh, third degree burns. Exactly. From that sparkler. Exactly. Uh, I, I, who I, who I, gave the, him a lighter? He's five. Exactly. God, I remember there was one year my younger brother he had a sparkler and he was wearing sandals. Oh, and uh, like the actual like portion of the, the sparkler like that actually like got burnt mm-hmm. like fell off and fell like right in the smack dab middle of Ooh. his foot. Yikes! And we had a <laughs> there were waterworks before the fireworks. Let me tell wow. you. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can go back in my Instagrams from forever ago and see uh, the two bo- the two giant bottle rockets. You know, the much mm-hmm. larger than yeah. normal. Uh, two giant bottle rockets stuck into a uh, very nice cowboy boot. From a couple Fourth of July's ago, uh, the most American thing I've ever done. So it's <laughs> an exciting time. Uh, yeah. Why didn't we get Captain but, uh, America to guest on the show? Oh, I don't know. But so, uh, you forgot to yeah. get Captain America <laughs> to guest on your Fourth of July yeah. episode. By the by, the time this comes out, that's an old meme. It is. But uh, well, so still a good one. What we're gonna hear on this beautiful <laughs> American day to talk about. Oh, um, my. We're going to be uh, recommending movies. We do this at the end of every episode. I thought it would be fun, and the other guys agree. Um, we're going to sit around and talk about... Just talk about just, movies just we talk like. talk about more movies we like, yeah. and that we think you also watch. And so we each carefully curated a list of uh, five <laughs> films to recommend... Um, These aren't necessarily for your uh, Fourth of July. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but it's just movies. Just in general that we like um, yeah. and that we thought would be yeah. good. Um, we do a one at a time. Yes, kind of and um, before situation? we before we get started, um, just from all of us here at Film Fracas, we're gonna go ahead and and, and recommend for your Fourth of July pleasure a group recommendation. The immortal uh, Independence Day research. No. But it's its predecessor. Untitled correctly. Independence Day three. No, they're Untitled, Untitled Independence, Independence Day, Day four. four. No, <laughs> they're they're immediate. Untitled Independence Day prequel. 
The 3rd of July. 1776. Ooh, also a good 4th of July movie. No, Independence Day. Oh. July 4th. Why it's didn't fantastic. you just say it? ID4. It's, it's great. Can't beat it. Um, the Aliens Ides of March. On Independence Day, I mean, Bill Pullman's speech, mm -hmm. um, perhaps still, to me, the most motivational speech in anything Should ever. I just I think put, this under, put it underneath? Just I think you ought to put a little bit of it under it. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution. But from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live. To exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. That's good. Okay, yeah, and that's we're back. Good. All right. You should just so, have like grand old flag just playing <laughs> underneath the entire episode. It's, 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 <laughs> Stars well. and stripes, I, just all the patriotic yeah, might, marches. Might as well. So could you please do that? Just like lightly playing in the background <laughs> of the entire episode. I don't know if I'll do that. <laughs> Come on, Brett. Anyway. Uh, would you like to get started with your first uh, recommendation? My first of recommendation. Our fantastic July Fourth episode. Yes. Uh, here's a movie. Uh, uh, the 1985 science fiction film uh, Cocoon. I don't know if either of you guys have seen it, but I really like this movie. I think it's overlooked a lot. Uh, Wilford Brimley. Yes, Wilford Brimley, uh, Don Amiche. Don Amiche won an Oscar for it. Blows my mind. But uh, it's, it's just, it's such a, like, it's a real touching movie. Like, when you think about it, uh, I don't know, should I give, like, a brief synopsis? Or? Yes. Go for it. Okay, uh, sell so... sell people on it. <laughs> okay, so... no this... spoilers. Okay, so the synopsis of this movie is that uh, Atlantis does exist. Uh, the people of Atlantis... Or, like, it's... I forget if it's Atlantis or, like, extraterrestrials that, like, live at the bottom of the ocean. I think it's aliens. What? I think it's aliens. Like, the extraterrestrials. Yeah, the yeah, they, they, they are aliens. I, I forget if they're, like, yeah. from Atlantis or, like, oh, their yeah. civilization is believed to be Atlantis. Anyway, regardless. Whatever. These aliens that live at the bottom of the ocean, like, bottom of the Atlantic, uh, they have to go back to their home planet for some reasons, but uh, they have to leave a lot of their people behind in these stasis pods or cocoons uh, because they don't have enough of their, like, co like, their collective life force to bring them all back. And so they... Put them, they find this abandoned pool house and they leave them in the pool that they fill with some of their life force. And so the aliens go off, but then like a group of them come back. But uh, in the time in between all that, uh, there's this retirement home right next to it. And so this group of guys, Wilford Brimley, Don Amache, and somebody else find this pool, go swimming, and they realize they feel a lot stronger and like feel a lot more invigorated and youthful. And so the aliens come back and realize, hang on, someone's been using our pool, or someone's been using the pool. And so then it's about the aliens confronting, or not confronting, but like finding these people and these old people being like, well, we want to live too. And it's about that. And it's like, there's a whole lot of heart to it. And just, it's, I think it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's got one of, at least to me, it's got one of the saddest scenes in the movie that I've ever seen. So take that how you will. But yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Robbie? Oh, my first recommendation. I'm going to go with uh, 2015's Anomalisa, um, a fantastic film uh, written and directed by Charlie Kaufman. Uh, I got to see it, uh, I just a little bit of a brag there, I got to see it with uh, producer uh, Dan Harmon talking about it, doing a Q&A afterwards. Really fascinating. Uh, so not a movie I would have watched except if I hadn't had the opportunity to meet Dan Harmon and ended up just absolutely loving it. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it's about, uh, it's about an author who kind of, who talks about customer service, I believe is his specialty. Mm -hmm. um, but he 
um, goes to this conference to speak about his book and about his specialty, and he meets this woman named Lisa, and it's kind of about his adventures and his existentialism, all in that. It's a very beautiful watch. It's a claymation or puppet. It's, um, stop motion. Yeah, stop motion for sure. Um, that was the word I was looking for. Um, but it's very fantastic. Uh, Tom Noonan voices everyone who is not uh, Michael or Lisa, and that's just a fantastic little fun part of it. Um, it's a great watch. Uh, kind of a slow burn, but it's uh, it's really beautiful. I think it's well written. It's well directed. Definitely one of my recommendations. I think it's slept on by a lot of people. So go check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, my first recommendation is going to be 1975's uh, The Man Who Would Be King, starring uh, Sean Connery, Michael Caine, and Christopher Plummer. I mean, can't be. Can't those, be. Those being the your... new Kevin Spacey. Yeah. <laughs> those being your... <laughs> your uh, that just, that's, uh, that's a weird way to think of him? No. No. Might, no. Anywho. The movie's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Um... It's really good. It's about two uh, British former soldiers decide to set them up as um, set themselves up as kings in Kafiristan, a fictional Middle Eastern country uh, where no white man has set foot since Alexander the Great. And um, it's a really interesting um, kind of look at uh, at kind of the the greediness of man <laughs> as they kind of <laughs> enter this city where you know they all were they're very quickly treated as like gods and they become king and it, the fame very much goes to their heads yeah. and they're two very like kind of get rich quick kind of people <laughs> and so it's a really interesting look at this at the kind of fragility of of man and also the greed and and how people succumb to it so easily so I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. Um, so this sounds like a more uh, a live action, mature version of the Road to El Dorado, a in, in, in a way, kind in of, a, in yes. a way, much yes. more mature though. Before it though, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Way, well, way, before, way before, before it. <laughs> but uh, I quite enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, uh, my my next rec my next recommendation is going to be the animated 2012 movie Justice League Doom. It was a direct-to-video, I believe, uh, and it's a comic book movie based on DC Comics. Uh, and the premise is Batman has made these contingency plans to neutralize the other members of the Justice League in case they should ever go rogue for one reason or another. But someone has stolen these plans and altered them to kill. And so it's about the Justice League like being torn down, finding out Batman has done this. And so then there's the internal rift in the league that they got to deal with while also trying to find the villain villains. And it's just, it does, a, it does such a good job of bringing, like having so many characters in one movie, providing equal time to all of them and having it all be like on the same level. It's all meaningful. No one gets like, no one rides in the backseat at all. And just and then even the villains like get a good amount of time and it's just like, it, it's a it, oh it's really good it's just and the the fight scenes are very well animated and just yeah I, I yeah I think it's great. All right, I have not seen Justice League Doom. It's uh, sat in my various queues and <laughs> all the different streaming services. It's, it's, it's been very on, good, but it's always uh, been one I've looked forward to watching. I have uh, it. We should watch it. We should. Watch we, it. we should. <laughs> Let's right do now. it. Stop the episode. Stop the, oh. Stop the episode. <laughs> no, not really, though. Um, anyway. <laughs> my second recommendation will be uh, 1998's Rushmore, uh, the second film by uh, modern auteur Wes Anderson. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, modern auteur. <laughs> Robbie yeah. doesn't watch Ooh. movies. Robbie watch films. Oh, 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 Robbie doesn't go to the movies. Fancy. Robbie goes to the cinema. The cinema. Fancy. I know, I'm super fancy. No. <laughs> um, it is the um, debut of Jason Schwartzman playing the main character, Max Fisher. Uh, it also stars the fantastic Bill Murray. Um, and it's just, it's very well written. It's one of my favorites to just watch on an afternoon. Um, I love the story. I love the carefully curated soundtrack that Wes Anderson puts together for it. Um, it's one of his collaborations with Owen Wilson, writing-wise. 
which I think tend to be Wes Anderson's best films, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, but it's got a great cast. It's got some great moments in it. Uh, you know, we'd like to joke about, or Carter and I talk about the OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Oh, are they? It's a lot of fun. If you haven't watched it and you got, you know, if you got into Wes Anderson more recently with Moonrise mm-hmm. Kingdom, The Grand Budapest Hotel, or Isle of Dogs, really go back and check out some of his early work. Yeah. You definitely see him grow on a scale mm-hmm. that's insane. If you watch Rushmore or Bottle Rocket and then you watch Grand Budapest Hotel, I mean, they my seem God. different, but the trait, you know. Just the sheer scale of the movies yeah. is absurd. How The how trademarks quickly. that have become the Wes yeah. Anderson you know, mm-hmm. touchstones mm-hmm. are there from the yeah. very beginning. And I think it's fantastic. I think it's maybe my favorite Wes Anderson movie. Definitely one of my favorite movies to just watch at any point in time. If anyone's like, hey, you want to watch Rushmore? I'm always down. <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. I think you guys should love it. Check it out. I still need to see Isle of Dogs. It was, it was I, pretty I, good. I, I never got to see it. Anyway. Anyhow, um, <laughs> it's the solo of uh, Wes Anderson movies, in my opinion. It's smack that, dab in the middle <laughs> for me, ranking wise. I, I liked it. It's pretty good. But <laughs> Tell us what other movies are pretty good, Carter. Well, my uh, second recommendation is um, 2003's Secondhand Lions. Um, I have always, 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 always loved this film. Um, I actually picked it up. I think we picked it up at a blockbuster one day for like a Friday night movie mm-hmm. night thing. I, I mean, I had never heard of it at the time. None of us had. And we sat down and watched it and we all absolutely adored it. Um, I've, it's become one of my favorites since then. Um, it stars uh, Haley Joel Osment, um, back when he was still a kid. Michael Caine, again, look at that. And Robert mm-hmm. Duvall and Keir Sedgwick. And um, it's a coming of age story about a, you know, a shy a uh, young kid, and he's he's sent by his mother, who's pretty irresponsible, um, to spend the summer with his wealthy eccentric uncles in Texas, and so you get you get uh, Michael Caine's entertaining uh, southern accent. You do. It's oh, one uh, of the best parts of that movie. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I but grew up with this movie as a favorite of my grandmother. She picked it yeah. up uh, just randomly. I probably in yeah. a similar situation. Yeah, it was in you know a, I've, a yeah, dollar I've bin. Always <laughs> always loved it. Yeah. Um, it very much it basically it follows this kid and you kind of learn why his uncles why his uncles are so eccentric and wealthy and where all of this came from and wh- that they've lived quite interesting lives and so you learn all about that and it's really it's really quite touching and heartwarming and um, I wish more people had seen it. It's one of those movies where it's like I've seen it and I wish more people will have seen it so that you know we could all. Basket it's very, very good. This is a movie people have been telling me I should see, and people have also been telling me I would like since I think the sixth grade. Like I've, like at least once every single year of my life from sixth grade to this point in time, someone has told me that Secondhand Lions is so good and that I should watch it. And I'm like, are there actually lions in this movie? Some yes. people tell me yes, and some people tell me no. There is, and so I'm not there sure what lions. movie this is. <laughs> there is, is but, a lion. But anyway, I should. There is. Yeah. I, I should. There is a presence of lions. <laughs> but a fantastic yeah. choice. Yes. Uh, would have been on my list if you didn't put it on yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my next one uh, is a bizarre one that I don't know anybody else that's seen it besides me. <laughs> But a uh, 2015 horror musical that was originally released in Poland, then it got an American release, uh, The Lure, also known as uh, Surki Dancingu in the traditional Polish. But uh, this is a dark, twisted take on The Little Mermaid, I guess. Which oh, is, it is a, I heard about this. It is a this. horror musical about these two mermaids that find their way on land and the owner or a singer in a nightclub brings them in one of them falls in love with her son or one of the actors there and it's a it it is it is something like i've been telling people to see this since i saw it but so far nobody has but it's wild it is something else so yeah i highly recommend it i remember seeing this like relatively soon after seeing la la land and this movie was going, and they bust into this big musical number in, like, a department store. And I was like, oh, that's right. This is also a musical. <laughs> Go figure. But, yeah, it's, it's got killer mermaids. It's 
it's something. <laughs> yeah. Um, my third pick here. Uh, this isn't gonna make me seem any less pretentious after I said auteur, <laughs> and you guys can't. Uh, is 1967's uh, Belle du Jour uh, by Luis Buñuel. Ooh, French. Fantasy. I know. I've got two French films on what, my what, what, what is God, the, Robbie. What is the soup du jour? No, it's the Belle du jour. Yes, what, what is the soup Hot du jour? Hot hors d'oeuvres? <laughs> anyway, this film is fantastic. Uh, Gore Lamy. It's a great example of the early work of Catherine Deneuve, <laughs> uh, the French actress who is fantastic. I love her in Catherine just about everything. Catherine Deneuve. Who? Catherine Bigelow. Can I make my recommendation? No. Oh, well. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, Belle du Jour. Uh, Soup du Jour. <laughs> sorry. It's, it's, it's nice not being on the receiving end of it for a change. No, it's, I understand, but <laughs> my last three get pretentious. I'm sorry. Um, but Belle du Jour is fantastic. Uh, a young, beautiful, uh, slightly frigid doctor's wife played by Catherine Deneuve. Uh, she, has, she can't find it possible to be intimate with her husband and but does secretly harbor these fantasies of being dominated and humiliated there's some very graphic scenes in it it's not for children for sure um neither is this podcast as i dropped a very hard mm. f-bomb earlier sorry um but <laughs> she uh becomes a prostitute but only works during the afternoons which gives her the uh you know the play on her name in the uh Whorehouse, the brothel is Belle du Jour, meaning you know Soup woman of, of the, the day. Woman of the <laughs> of the day, as opposed to uh, Belle de Nuit, uh, which is um, the woman of the night, which is a common term for a prostitute. Bat girl. Sure, this movie's about Bat girl. Is this before or after Les Mis? It's a really good. Is movie. Is there soup in this movie or not? I when do, when does the rat learn to cook? You know. Toy Story? I didn't do this during either <laughs> any of your movies. I'm just it's, trying it's, to get... it's the fact that you brought attention to it yourself. You're like, I'm going to seem so pretentious. You kind of you kind of brought this on well, yourself. Well, I brought the pretentiousness to myself. I didn't bring the repeated harassment. <laughs> Sorry. We get uh, that soup uh, du we, jour sounds we, like we have, du jour. We have fun here at Film Fracas. Do we? <laughs> Maybe not Robbie, but Carter and I do. Right, Carter? We have a ton of fun. Yeah. A fantastic, it's a fantastic film. It really is. The costumes are very, very well designed by uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Um, they're just, it's a fantastic, beautiful film. Everyone should watch it at some point. It's a great example of Louis Buñuel's later work. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's available probably somewhere, I think. For sure, Filmstruck mm -hmm. in the Criterion Corre yeah. Collection. Correction. So yes, please check out uh, Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. I want soup now. It's fantastic. I should go to Jason's. Um, oh, I know Jason's deli's closed. <laughs> My uh, third recommendation is 1967's Casino Royale. Uh, not Same year of... that came, the Belle du Jour came out. Oh, fun fact. Uh, not a lot of people know that there was an original Casino Royale, not the Daniel Craig one. Wait, Does is this the one with Daniel Craig? No. Does this movie have soup in it? I don't think so. Okay. But, See, um, that's how you answer a question about soup, Robbie. I said I wasn't sure. <laughs> I said I was not sure. Anywho, okay, anywho this, um, this movie kind of roughly follows the same storyline as Casino Royale. Um, it was, it was Does the he first... shoot a propane tank and make it explode? No. It was the first uh, spoof, or one of the first early spy spoofs, and it was specifically of James Bond. Um, and it's quite funny. It came out after the first four Bond movies, I believe. I believe there were four Bond movies out by the time this came out. Um, and it's, it's really great. It stars, um, David Niven, who's a fantastic, fantastic, uh, British comedic actor. Um, it stars perhaps my favorite comedic, comedic actor of all time, Peter Sellers. Um, he's also absolutely hysterical in this film. Um, Ursula Andress plays the, um, uh, plays the female lead, um, and she was the Bond girl in Doctor No, and so that's kind of her coming back and poking fun at that. And then Orson Welles um, plays Le Chief, who is played by uh, Mads Mikkelsen in the new Casino Royale, and this is one of one of his uh, later film roles. He, did, he didn't do very many on-screen roles after this one. Yes, um, but large and in charge. Yep. Orson Welles. Yep. So but, uh, 60s he's out. I'm trying quite to, enjoyable. I'm trying to remember my Orson Welles uh, filmography here. Is this before or after F for Fake? Um, that is a good question. So, F for Fake was... 
so Casino Royale. Seventy five. So this is. Mm-hmm. So, so this 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 before. Casino Royale came out in sixty seven, and this mm-hmm. was its own thing. Mm-hmm. But then there was the new mm-hmm. Bond Casino Royale, which was like a remake of the parody. Or no, because Casino Royale was the first book that that it was Ian the first Fleming. that Ian Fleming wrote in the James Bond series. Okay, and the the story of it of James Bond. And Vesper Lind, who's the Bond girl, mm-hmm. and he goes and plays poker with the Sheaf. Right. That right. all is the storyline of the book. And um, at this point, they had not made a Casino Royale movie. Um, okay. And so they took that and turned that story into the spoof of James Bond. And then later in 2007? Something. Something five. like five. Five. Um, when they made the Daniel Craig Bond, that was an honest to goodness adaptation okay. of the original Casino okay. Royale. Because um, I, I, I always 2006, thought... 2006, I apologize. 2006. I always thought Casino Royale like was a Bond movie that they just like remade for mm-hmm. some reason. I didn't know it was a parody. That's pretty yeah. that's pretty cool. Oh, this is oh this is a movie that's got uh, the music by uh, Burt Bacharach. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, that, I, I've heard the soundtrack to Casino Royale, but I haven't seen it. Anyway. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. I I've know. never seen it. I've looked forward it's, to seeing it. I've, you got it. I just got it on Blu-ray. I've, it's I've never seen this or the James Bond Casino Royale. The James Bond Casino Royale is also one of good. three James Bond movies I've ever actually seen. I've only ever seen Skyfall. Oh, wow. <laughs> Casino Royale is my other favorite of the Daniel Craig Bond films. I remember Casino Royale came out and everybody was talking about it. and It's yeah. very, very good. Mm-hmm. I quite enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, my next uh, recommendation, and keeping on the whole 1967 train, is uh, the old uh, 1967 suspense thriller Wait Until Dark. Starring uh, Audrey Hepburn and uh, I don't remember the actor's name, but I'll uh, you know look that up while I'm talking about it. But uh, Audrey Hepburn is this blind woman who lives in an apartment by herself, and uh, by some string of events, this doll that has had heroin sewn into it ends up in her possession, and so the drug dealers that uh alan arkin that's who it is mm-hmm. alan arkin's in this movie he, oh man he plays a seedy weaselly guy and he, <laughs> ooh, he's a guy you do not like but uh and so like alan arkin and his other like compatriots they like pose as like police officers and other people and they come like talk to audrey hepburn and like sneak into her apartment while she's distracted and like it's about her like figuring out something's not quite right and then like defending herself and like it's it's it, it's odd. It was odd to me seeing Audrey Hepburn play a like dramatic role like this. But uh, it's it's good. It's got it has a jump scare, but it is probably like one of, if not the best, jump scares in in film history of cinema. There's no soup in this movie. So, There's yeah. no soup in that. <laughs> what if there is soup in that movie? <laughs> then I stand corrected. <laughs> um, so my next pick is. Probably the one you're least likely to go see out of my picks, uh, which is 1990's uh, Central Park, which is a documentary by Frederick Wiseman. It is nearly three hours long, and unless you just are a Wiseman freak, you're not going to love it. <laughs> but I think everyone should see this. It's my favorite uh, one of it's my, one of my favorite films from one of my favorite documentarians, Frederick Wiseman, of course, uh, who was very famous for his cinema verite approach, which is to Set up a camera and just let what happens happen. Fancy. It's super fancy. <laughs> it's actually the Fancy. opposite of... <laughs> so is it about, like, the... Central Park in like, uh, New the... York City. Oh, so it's just, like... Oh, cinema very... So it's just, like, people yeah. doing their thing? So, yeah. So what's nice about it is it's different scenes that... So you just set up his camera for quite some time, and it kind of cuts between some of the more interesting scenes and stuff that they caught. Uh, there's an acting class that goes on out doors mm-hmm. with this very eccentric uh director teacher i don't know what you want to call him uh who is fantastic he's very fun to watch my favorite segment in the entire movie is this uh district the central park district meeting in which they discuss uh moving the tennis courts from one section to an from one area of the park to another mm-hmm. uh, in order to make room for the amphitheater or something like that i don't remember exactly why they're moving the tennis courts they're discussing this and the poor, uh, I guess, speaker of the board or whatever, the head of the board, has to keep reminding people, please, 
This meeting's been going on for two hours. Please, if someone else has already made your point, just say you agree with the point before you. Do not reiterate. <laughs> and it just keeps cutting between people stating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> and this poor head of the board being like, once again, I would like to remind everyone to keep your, keep your comments short. And if you're only coming up to agree with someone who has spoken before you, just iterate that you are agreeing. Do not... <laughs> Do not restate the same thing. <laughs> just this poor guy watching him slowly just hate his life. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a very good background movie because uh, you can tune in for the scenes and the stuff that you like. Because it is, you know, it's nearly three hours. It's two hours and 56 minutes. But it's a good watch if you can uh, get a hold of it. Uh, also, if you're a friend of mine, I definitely have it on DVD. We can watch it whenever. <laughs> um, but Central Park, 1990, Frederick Wiseman. Watch any Frederick Wiseman movie, actually. Um, but that's my recommendation there. And is there soup in it? Uh, yes. There's a movie. We have a winner. Finally. Finally. That's the one movie I'm going <laughs> to watch. one movie with soup. All right. Uh, my next film um, is a bit of a B movie. Uh, 2002's Reign of Fire. Um, this one kind of came and went, but it's it's an amazing piece of cinema. It's basically <laughs> a, it's a set in a post-apocalyptic London. Um, I don't remember exactly what year. Something like 2028? I, I don't know. I don't remember. Somebody, we just watched it the other day. Yeah. Uh, something like that. But the crazy thing is it stars Matthew McConaughey, Christian Bale, and Gerard Butler before really any of the three of them were super famous. <laughs> I guess uh, Christian Matthew Bale had just done a couple things. Matthew McConaughey was the most famous at the time. Really? Yeah, he was the top build. Um, 2020. But 2020. That, that's what it that's takes what it Oh, it's straight it's, up 2020. Yeah, it's it's 2020. Two years. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's basically about them fighting dragons in post-apocalyptic London. And it's pretty insane just from that description. It's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. It's yeah. a lot of fun. It's very dumb. And I quite quite enjoyed immensely it's 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 uh it's a good popcorn movie to sit down and enjoy and turn yeah. your brain off for a bit for sure yeah, that, that's one of the movies that i recently reviewed and while it was fun and entertaining i ultimately had to give it a thumbs down because it's not very good no it's not great Brett although know what he's talking about although i, I do love the i, I do love the, i love the tagline he didn't like it because there was no soup in it. <laughs> Was love, there soup in this movie? I not that I remember. So. But anyway, I love how the tagline is fight fire with fire because that's like, oh, it's brilliant. That's like so simple but also like so dumb because like fight fire with fire. No, the dragons eat fire. Yes. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> uh, it's, no, it, it's fun, but yeah. Yes, so that is my fourth it, it, it is a popcorn movie. Yeah, as for Carter sure. Said. I quite knew it. All right, I'm going to finish out my list of recommendations here with the 1978 animated movie Watership Down. This is not a popcorn movie. This is not a feel-good movie. This is a oh kind of movie. <laughs> uh, it's about this group of rabbits that live on like a warren or in a meadow or something, and one of them has like a dream or nightmare or premonition that like it's going to be like destroyed and everyone's going to die. And so this group of rabbits makes their way to uh, this new war in this down called Watership Down. But along the way, they face all manner of stuff like having to cross busy roads and uh, animals attacking them, getting caught in snares and other rabbits attacking them, people, rabbits getting shot. And it is dark. It is gruesome. It's bloody. And it's just, it's very uncanny and like just... It's not a fun feel good movie, yeah, it's but like not a it's a great fun feel good it's, movie. It's good, and it's oh. just it's another wild ride. I, I highly recommend it though, because yeah, it shows that animation isn't just cartoons, isn't just superheroes and fun and laughs and everything. It's oh yeah, Watership Down. It's something. Yeah, um, my final recommendation, uh, going back to that 1967 train here, um, is. And also my second French film uh, is Jacques Tati's Playtime. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. Jack uh, Titties? You know... <laughs> is there soup in it? We need to know. There's not soup in it. Okay. This is maybe one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, it's incredibly funny. It's 
uh, incredibly well made. It's written and directed by Jacques Tati, and he's kind of the last example in my head of, you know, the classic slapstick character, you know, Charlie mm -hmm. Chaplin had his tramp character, Buster Keaton had uh, all of his, you know, deadpan characters, and Jacques Tati had uh, Monsieur Hulo, uh, Hulo who um, is very similar to these. He's uh, kind of a bumbling uh, observer of the world around him. Uh, there's some great scenes, and for this whole movie, uh, Tati built essentially an entire high-tech Paris for uh, his character to wander about, and there's just there's some great, uh, very great cinematic moments uh, with the apartments, and there's just a lot. I love this movie so much. Uh, Jacques Tati is one of my favorite directors. Um, definitely check this movie out if you ever get the chance. It is absolutely worth every minute of it. Uh, one of my favorites of all time, yeah. and my last recommendation because of that. <laughs> my uh, my final recommendation is uh, much like Brett, also a not feel good movie at all. <laughs> this is probably the saddest movie I think I've ever seen. Um, it is called is 1998's What Dreams May Come, mm. um, starring uh, the late great another one of my favorite comedic actors of all time, Robin Williams. Um, this is him in a rare dramatic role. Um, I think he excels in all of his dramatic roles and all of his comedic roles. I think the man excelled in everything. I'm in the middle of reading his biography about Dave Gitzenkoff, <laughs> and it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, shout out to him. It's so good. Please read it. It's called Robin. Um, besides that, the movie. Uh, what Dreams May Come. Uh, it's a drama about uh, Robin Williams as a father who uh, dies in a car crash. And he basically goes to heaven and um, searches heaven and hell to find his beloved wife because she has also died um, and his kids have died. It's very sad. Um, <laughs> but it's also very hopeful. It is very hopeful. It, it is yeah. very much a message of hope it and is not giving up. Yeah, it's a message about not giving up, but in the end you're like, but they're all dead, so... Uh, it, it's, but, it's, uh, it starts off and it hits you and it's like oh no but then like yeah. as it goes along it gets yeah less sad but it is yeah it's it, a but very, yeah it, it's it's, it's a not, very heavy film it's a heavy it's not a feel good but it is a very hopeful yes. one yeah so, so I yeah. absolutely I, adore I it I love what dreams but yeah film. Robin Williams Cuba Gooding Jr. it's fantastic that yeah. was my final recommendation For and sure. with that um, I think before we sign off we ought to give a shout out to our sponsor Oh, yes, before uh, the Studio Headphones. Studio Headphones. They are still sponsoring the show for some god-awful reason. Whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are you we're, talking about? We're a good show. We are a good show. <laughs> I like us. I like us, too. You know what? Never mind. I'll let you guys take it. <laughs> but, yeah, Su Studio Sweden, they uh, gave us a couple of a couple pairs of their Regent headphones, and they are, oh, they're so good. They're stylish. The quality is fantastic. I've said this before and I'll say it again. They're not noise canceling, but you put them on and they might as well be noise canceling. You can't hear a thing when those things are on. And uh, yeah, they're they are Bluetooth, but they come with a headphone jack cord, so it's like yeah, Bluetooth when you want it or headphones when you want it. And it's uh, like they're they're so convenient, they're so good. The charge on them lasts a very long time, and they're just yeah, they're very user friendly, which is what I really like. Absolutely. Currently in the headphones market, uh, you can only get either style or technology, but luckily Studio is working to change all of that. Uh, they're offering these great headphones that also look so good. Uh, so if you want to get your hands on your own pair of Studio headphones, whether they're the Regents like Brett has or any of their other great pairs of headphones, uh, they can. you can go to their website, studio.com. And they've got so many great options there. They've got uh, everything from wireless earbuds to, you know, over-the-ear headphones like the Regents. And they're even their own, uh, you know, wireless earbuds similar to a certain other brand that I'm sure we can't mention or else we will get sued. But made for <laughs> uh, your phone that may or, not, may or may not be running on a certain system that's only available for one phone. I'm just trying to heavily imply that there is a competitor to it. For a cheaper <laughs> price, especially once you use the code FILMFRACUS at checkout for 15% off your order. So, e seriously, go check out studio.com. Get yourself a nice pair of headphones. You know, you can use them to listen to the show after you get them. So thanks for, thank you to Studio Headphones for sponsoring the show. Uh, 
thank you to you guys for listening to yes. us talk about sponsors. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. If you if you get a pair of studio headphones from because of our recommendation, send us a picture of you with them. Uh, tag us and Studio so they know that uh, we sent you there. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, that pretty much wraps up our yeah. Fourth of July spectacular. Um, you can find me on Twitter at C A Spilliards, like Spill Spilling Yard and Add an S. Um, my recommendation this week, on top of the other five I've made today, um, I'm going to recommend a TV show this time because we did a lot of movies. Uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you ever ever seen the other Roland Emmerich movie, Stargate, the spinoff TV series, Stargate SG-1, aired from 98 or 99, something like that, to 2008, I think, something like that. Um, ran for 10 seasons, uh, a little over 200 episodes. It's a long series, but if you like sci-fi, it's very good sci-fi. Um, very consistent. Uh, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I highly recommend it. Go watch it. Watch it if All you right. like sci-fi. Okay. Uh, you find me on Snapchat at Brett J-H-N-S-N number one. Post a review of a movie as close to every day as I possibly can. You like it, you don't like it, send me a message, let me know. We can talk about it. Uh, I'm also going to be recommending a TV show this time. Uh, I'm going to be recommending the Spawn, the animated series that ran on HBO back in the 90s. Uh, very dark, very mature, uh, also very good. It's, uh, yeah, it's supernatural, it's fantastical. This guy makes a deal with the devil after he's killed. And it's about him trying to reclaim his memory, his life, his humanity. And it, like, yeah, it's yeah, surprisingly sophisticated for an animated miniseries back in the 90s. Very nice, very you, nice. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, but sorry, I was just going to say. Uh, based on the comic books, but you don't need to have read the comic books to understand what's going on. So that's oh, nice. Very nice. It's very, always very nice. nice. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Robbie underscore DeShazer. Uh, seriously, go follow me on Instagram. I'm going to start posting some more live stuff uh, so you can follow me there. Um, hopefully you guys will like it. Uh, I was going to recommend a television show, and then one of Carter's picks, actually, one of Carter's recommendations actually got me thinking about how uh, I haven't recommended Dead Poet Society at all yet. <laughs> and it's one of my favorites. It's another dramatic uh, Robin Williams role. It's a very, very good one. Um, also check it out. not a feel-good movie. Not a feel-good <laughs> movie. No one told me it wasn't a feel-good movie, and I watched it alone when I was sad one day, and it did not help. <laughs> not a great movie, though. <laughs> it is a great movie. Uh, but, so, really good another pick to throw in there was reminded of it mm -hmm. um, but that's gonna do it for us yep. today yes. on this bonus episode uh, of Bone Frackers. yes everyone please enjoy your 4th of July uh, drink responsibly say stay safe no don't no one yes. don't blow up your hand with a yeah. firework yeah. even though don't, they are fun just, don't do anything dumb because we have another episode I know another bonus episode you be able, yeah you wanna be able to yeah. listen to our uh, next bonus our next episode. episode yeah okay. hey so well yes yeah thank you for listening stay thank tuned you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Fracas. We know there are a lot of shows on the web, and we are so glad you took the time to listen to ours. Thank you, Brett Johnson, Robbie DeShazer, and Phoenix Arola for helping to write and produce each episode of the show. There's no team behind Film Fracas, it's just us, so consider giving us a five-star review wherever you listen. It really does help get the word out. You can follow the show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Film Fracas. Once again, thanks for listening, and we can't wait for you to hear our next episode.